But I guess in this question, um, you are not actually given the momentum. So maybe uh, let me let me just go through this as a, <laughs> um, good uh, one of the number exercise ones that's just good to go through because it's a. Uh, um, it mixes in some things that people might not be quite as familiar with yet, uh, which is use of the electron volt unit. So, so this question says, uh, let me just double check the hint. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for for part B, it won't be correct, so you have to use a relativistically correct expression. But for both of them, I'll just use relativistically correct expression. So the this question demonstrates the usefulness of the the electron volt unit because um, a lot of the experimental setups dealing with uh, elementary particles utilizes electric potential difference to put energy into particles and the way electron volt is defined when a particle goes through 60 um, 60 megavolt uh, difference 60 MV difference of uh, electric potential then change in energy of that particle is simply the electric potential difference expressed in the electron volt unit. So the energy difference for both uh, proton, which has uh, charge 1E, and electron, which has charge minus 1E, the magnitude of the energy change will be um, 60 MeV. So, so, um, so <laughs> the question giving you the electric potential difference is actually giving you the energy difference. Uh, simplifies one step. <laughs> and um, so the question asks, what is the velocity of a proton accelerated by such a potential? What is the velocity of an electron accelerated by such a potential? And I think with the part A, uh, if I use the non-relativistic formulas, you know, take this to be the change in kinetic energy and say my uh, kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. I have a feeling that for A, the answer will be graded as correct. But um, let me just do it fully relativistically, uh, just to show how uh, fully relativistic approach is actually not all that uh, harder. It's maybe less familiar, but once you develop the familiarity mathematical, it's not actually any harder. So this is what I'm going to rely on, which is that the expression for total relativistic energy is gamma mc squared. And the what I want you to start developing is this sense, intuition, that whenever you have gamma, you have speed. Because whenever you have gamma, this is the algebraic relationship you can go through, you know, beta being defined as V over C. Gamma is uh, defined as one over square root of one minus beta squared. And inverting that relationship, beta is equal to square root of one minus one over gamma squared. So I want you to just have this sense that whenever you have gamma, you have a velocity. So when it's asking for velocity, uh, what I actually want to get to first is gamma. Because once I have I gamma, uh, once I have gamma, then I can just uh, get to velocity in a single step here. So um, what I need is an expression for the um, expression for the total relativistic energy of each of the particles after having gone through this potential difference, and then I'm going to divide out the the mc squared. So gamma is equal to the total relativistic energy divided by mc squared. So for proton, um, oh, I think it, so I think I can do the rest in the calculator without actually writing down any more expressions. That's how simple this algebra is. Um, so let me just move these up so that I can put my calculator somewhere reasonable. Um, okay, so so uh, let, let's go through this. Uh, the total ener relativistic energy of proton is going to be its uh, rest energy, 938.3, plus the 
the change in the energy coming through, um, having accelerated through the, the, the pot electric potential difference. So 60. Um, oh, and um, so, <laughs> sorry. <I'm laughs> so a lot of times it'll look like I'm kind of using, um, uh, using this uh, unit convention that C is equal to one. Technically I am not, but um, using C is equal to one unit system and treating rest mass as being interchangeable with the rest energy, they all kind of go together. So that, that is what I'm doing. So I, I am not ignoring the unit. I'm acknowledging that the unit is written in such a way that this C squared will just uh, cancel out in the proper plugging in of the expressions. So with that, so this is the total energy of the proton uh, after having been accelerated through. So I divide it by its rest energy, 938.3. Mega electron volts or MeV, then I have my gamma as uh, this quantity. Quantity that's rather close to one, so it's uh, not quite fully relativistic, um, or it's not well. You know, it's gamma is six percent difference from one. So. Okay, let me store that, and I'm gonna write out this expression for beta in my calculator. So one minus one divided by the store the quantity squared. Okay, close the parenthesis and then take the square root. So that will be my speed, 0 0.341. Uh, that's my beta multiplied it by C, that's the velocity. So 0 0.341. Let me make sure that's correct. And, um, and, and the advantage of using this fully relativistic approach, which is not all that much more complicated mathematically, is that when I'm dealing with the electron, which will be uh, much more relativistic than the proton, I can just use the exact same formulas. I don't have to change a single thing because my initial approach was already relativistically correct. So the total relativistic energy of the uh, electron will be its rest energy, 0 0.511 MeV, plus 60 MeV gained from being accelerated through the potential difference. Uh, that's E divided by its rest energy, 0 0.511. So that's gonna be my gamma. <laughs> it's a three digit value. So I'm in the limit that might be called the uh, ultra relative stick limit. My speed is gonna be very close to C. Oh, so I guess if I just put one, it'll probably grade it as correct. But let me work it out so that I have a number that's more correct. <laughs> um, so I stored it. Uh, let me do calculation of beta. So parenthesis start one minus one divided by memory recall. That's my gamma squared parenthesis close. That's very close to one. Let me take the square root. So still very close to one. So 0 0.99996. So four, four nines and then six. 0 0.99996. And I, I actually lost quite a bit of precision in a rounding of this four. Uh, so, yeah. But I guess at the level of precision, the question is asking it doesn't matter because technically I could have put in one and the way it's set up, it would have did it as correct, did I? Oh, um, um, okay, uh, I don't see a submit button, I guess. Why isn't there a submit button? Let me just double check and correct something that might be um, wrong. I thought I fixed this. <laughs> Okay, hundred. I I guess when you get it right, it doesn't it doesn't let you retry. What if I want to get it wrong? Um, okay. Um, let me do get a similar question, and uh, it'll okay. So you know, with a similar question, it changed the numbers. But what I was saying earlier was because it's such an ultra relativistic case. Uh, if I said the uh, velocity of electron is more or less one c, it'll say that's correct. Because, um, and in fact, that is an approximation that you will see me sometimes make uh, in some algebraic questions where it's easier to treat a particle as more or less moving at speed C. Uh, 